an Equipment Management Information Subsystem, EMIS, is somewhat different from the other EMS subsystems. An EMIS is not a standalone system, but rather an integration of all the other EMS subsystems. The objective of the EMIS is to provide management information from the EMS for effective, timely, and efficient decision making. The EMIS is not a panacea. It is a tool for managers to plan, schedule, monitor, evaluate, and control equipment operations. The EMS should provide for identification of all output reports and input data from the various EMS subsystems. The EMIS is an integrated relational database with report generating capabilities. For normal operation, data is collected and entered through the individual EMS subsystems and is stored in the database. The basic input data is processed in several ways and may be shared by several subsystems. The processed data is summarized in various standardized output reports. There are several advantages in designing a system around a relational database. First, there are a number of commercial database management systems available. Second, as user needs change, the system can be readily modified to allow for new input data and output reports with relatively minor effort. Most database management systems have a built-in report generation capability. This feature allows the user to define the output formats of reports tailored to suit their needs using any combination of data elements contained in the database. In typical EMS installations, a number of pre-designed output reports will be supplied with the initial setup. However, user needs change from time to time, and the standard reports may need to be modified. EMS installations can be found on computer systems from the smallest microcomputers to the largest mainframes. The size of the fleet will be the major determining factor. Two determining factors for the type and size of computer are storage capacity and processing speed. Storage capacity can be estimated by identifying the amount of equipment and the number of data elements required for each piece. An estimate of file size can be made by adding up the field sizes or width of each item. Approximately one byte of computer storage is required for each alphabetic character and approximately seven bytes are required for each numeric field. The calculated file size should be increased by about 30 percent to allow for indexing of files in the database. Then the estimated storage requirements should be tripled to allow for future growth, file manipulations, and EMIS and other software storage. To be useful, management information must be timely. Weekly reports must be produced within one day 
after weekly data entry and monthly reports within about three days after monthly data entry. Another hardware consideration is the number of entry points into the EMIS. That is, the number of terminals that will be required for data entry. In a centralized small agency, a standalone system with one terminal will normally suffice. If the data entry point is separated from the area where inquiries will be made, or if there are several equipment yards and shops, then more than one terminal may be required. This is known as a multi-user environment. With this arrangement, data can be entered at the remote site in a standalone mode and, when convenient, uploaded to the central computer for processing. The remote would also have access to selected files on the central computer. Specific details will vary with individual needs and types of installation. But the overall structure outlined here will generally meet typical agency needs. The diagram shown here provides an overview of the EMIS. The database required for an effective EMIS should contain the following types of files. Equipment Inventory Master File Parts and Supplies Master File Shop Personnel Master File Work Order File Performance Standards Files Annual Work Program File Work Accomplishment and Expenditure File Equipment Maintenance Equipment Utilization File Shop Labor Unit Cost File and Purchase Order Status File. Successful implementation of the Equipment Management System will require careful planning and scheduling. There are some general considerations that have been derived from experience in a wide range of agencies. Although these will not guarantee success, they can facilitate the implementation process. These implementation considerations include commitment to the concept by top management, clear understanding and communication of the basic objectives of equipment management and involvement of all levels of the organization in each step of the system development process. A sound system design tailored to the needs and circumstances of the agency, including realistic implementation plan and schedule expert guidance and assistance, orientation, documentation, and training, and system monitoring and improvement. No major development effort can succeed without a firm commitment by top management. This means commitment of sufficient funds, resources, and time. Involvement by managers at all levels is necessary to ensure commitment to basic objectives of the system and commitment of personnel needed. The task of developing and implementing an EMS is a major undertaking. A project manager with an understanding of systems analysis concepts should be assigned on a full-time basis. Generally, 
the equipment manager has too many demands on his time to effectively fill this role. Other commitments of support must be made from time to time. Every manager involved with equipment as a user should be involved occasionally even if only in a review capacity. The system design presented here is a general design that has evolved from experience with a large number of agencies. It is generally applicable to all types of equipment operations, but is aimed primarily at equipment used for road and street maintenance. However, implementation requires some tailoring to develop performance standards, quantity standards, and management reports that are applicable in a specific situation. Many agencies have found that assistance from consultants experienced in equipment management can help. Comprehensive equipment management systems are relatively new and information on the subject is limited. Although outside assistance will substantially reduce time commitments by the agency's staff, there will still be need for involvement from time to time. Even with most of the development and implementation work provided by contract, the agency should assign a project coordinator to work with the consultant. This will ensure that the agency is thoroughly familiar with the product and will be able to carry it forward and make future revisions. Agency personnel should be oriented on the new system early in the development process. Thorough understandings of the system and individual responsibilities are essential to smooth implementation. The EMS should be thoroughly documented for both the operators and users of the system. If the system is automated, the procedures for data entry and operation of the computer system should be documented. Some agencies have found that two separate manuals are desirable. An equipment management system manual that describes all aspects of the system is usually provided for office personnel who operate and maintain the EMS. A user's manual is normally provided for equipment personnel which contains descriptions of authorized work activities, performance standards, scheduling and reporting forms, and related instructions. An important question will need to be addressed early in the development process. Should a customized software package be developed? Or should one or several commercially available systems be acquired? The cost of developing customized software will generally be more than the cost of commercially available software. The advantage is having a package exactly suited to the agency's needs. The commercially available packages should be reviewed carefully to ensure that all requirements of the EMS are met. Some packages provide inventory control, others aid in scheduling, some are geared to tracking work orders. A few provide for the entire management cycle. Some firms offer comprehensive software packages as part of their services, but do not sell the software separately. This is because installation of the software package by itself 
does not constitute an EMS. Without making the necessary improvements in the way that work is planned, budgeted, scheduled, reported, and controlled, no improvement in equipment operations will be realized. After implementation, operations should be monitored carefully to ensure that all elements are working as intended and that personnel are using the system properly. In some cases, subtle bugs may show up after a period of operation, in spite of thorough testing. Sometimes, operator error causes the system to perform unexpectedly. In any case, a prudent manager will monitor results carefully, especially during the first few months of operation. Another reason for carefully monitoring results is to take advantage of the new information that is now available to managers. The need for monitoring never really ends, even after the initial first-year adjustments. The EMS provides a framework in which changes can be readily evaluated and adopted. An undertaking of this magnitude must be carefully planned and scheduled to ensure orderly and effective development. Also, resource requirements must be clearly identified and allocated. Generally, one of two approaches has been followed. Development of the entire system and implementation of all elements simultaneously or development and implementation of one element at a time. In either case, most public works agencies can usually complete the development and implementation process in about 12 months. An additional 12 months is usually required to monitor operations and make refinements to the system. At the end of the first full year of operation, performance and quantity standards can be reviewed and revised if necessary. At that point, additional training can be provided to overcome any remaining problem areas. The work is typically accomplished in three phases. Phase one, preparations. Phase two, system design. And phase three, implementation. Phase one, preparation, consists of several preparatory tasks. Task one is conduct of preliminary work. This task is intended to clarify the agency's objectives for the tasks ahead. A basic policy statement on equipment management should be developed and adopted, indicating a commitment on the part of top officials to improve the equipment operations. An assessment of the agency's needs should be made. Fulfillment of these needs will be an important consideration in selecting or adapting a system conceptual design in the next two tasks. A project manager should be assigned. This assignment will involve substantial amounts of time, perhaps half time or full time for about 12 months, depending on design and implementation arrangements. Task two involves review of alternatives for system development. There are several courses of action to be considered in developing an EMS. First, the conceptual design presented here 
may be used to guide development and implementation. Or, a commercially available EMS package may meet the agency's requirements. Task 3 involves selecting a course of action and obtaining approval. After considering the alternatives, the project manager and equipment manager should recommend a course of action and seek required approvals. Task 4 involves developing a detailed work plan, schedule, and cost estimate. Phase 2 consists of all tasks related to development of a detailed design for an EMS prior to implementation.